Thanks very much. Thanks so much for that introduction. Uh, you mentioned in passing the, uh, a reference to that cover on The Stranger this week. Have you guys seen that cover? It's a, it's a, I've, got, I've got five brothers, and they're, I'm never going to hear the end of it from them, I'll tell you that. Um, first, happy birthday. Happy 50th birthday, WEC. Now, I, I've been thinking about turning 50 lately. I actually just returned from a trip a week or two ago with three college buddies, and we just took a trip to go tour English Premier League soccer games. That was our trip. But the, uh, the reason for the trip was because all of us had just turned 50 or were about to turn 50. Uh, and my wife's, she would not appreciate me saying this, but my wife's about to turn 50 as well. So I've been thinking about turning 50 a lot lately. And I've decided 50 is the best age, right? You know where you've been, right? You know where you've been, you know exactly who you are, and you know what's important to you, right? You know what's important to you. And I want to share with you a little bit what's important to me that I think you all share, and what's important to how I run my office, and, uh, and what's important to me with this new administration. So uh, my family's been in this state since the 19th century. My ancestors homestead in the 1880s, uh, sometime before statehood, up along the Skagit River near what's now Marble Mount. And uh, they were right there on the river. And uh, uh, as you can imagine, the environment was you know, central to the family, as you might imagine. Uh, not too many decades ago, the family gave that property to the state of Washington. And I take our kids, Colleen and I take our kids by once in a while, so they, they see the history uh, of our family in the state. So when I was going to propose to uh, my then girlfriend, Colleen, who's a native of the Northwest, uh, I picked a particularly beautiful spot to propose. It was the Dungeness Spit, the hike out to the lighthouse at the end of the Dungeness Spit. For those of you who've been there, it's about a four and a half mile hike out. But I have to admit, I, I got out there, we hiked out there, and I was gonna propose out there on the driftwood near the lighthouse. And as we sat down, it occurred to me that if she said no, <laughs> it was a really, really long hike back, right? <laughs> So thank God she said yes, but uh, thank God she said yes. So I want to talk about the other Washington, as I think Jay mentioned, and the darkness that's come there. But before I do, since becoming Attorney General, there are certain parts of our work that I felt strongly needed more resources and a greater prioritization. Civil rights was one area. Uh, another area is environmental protection. So before I became Attorney General, it had been about 10 years since we had prosecuted an environmental criminal case. That did not seem right. We're the largest law firm in the state of Washington. We had no unit devoted to enforcing our environmental laws in the state. No formal unit doing that affirmative work. Uh, that did not seem right to me. We're the largest law firm in the state of Washington. So we've created that now. We have a unit, and this is what they do. They do environmental crimes and civil work as well. And a couple of folks in that new unit are here today. I want them to stand up somewhere. Bill Sherman, who leads that group, and Kelly Wood, I think are both here. Please stand up. There's Kelly. And Bill and Kelly are part of a team that are bringing cases, like the one we recently filed, where the first state in the country to sue Monsanto for the harms of those PCBs. Monsanto, Monsanto, an entity that knew the harm, knew the harm that came from PCBs for decades, for decades. We literally have internal documents in which they write to each other, we know this is harming our environment and harming people and wildlife, but the profits are too good for us to stop. That's almost a direct quote. Almost every waterway is contaminated by the PCBs that they created. One of those is the Skagit River. It pisses me off. It does, it pisses me off. What they did, what they did was not right, and they need to be held accountable for that. And folks like Bill and Kelly are gonna make sure they are held accountable. Now, I wanna say a word about uh, the new administration. And you know, there's been a lot of attention about our successful lawsuit against the president that shut down his travel ban. Thank you. And 
and my team has worked so hard. Um, you know, the executive order was signed on a Friday night, and by Monday afternoon, they worked all through the weekend, uh, and they filed the complaint federal court Monday. Um, it, was, it was quite a weekend. And I remember, talking, I remember talking to my sister general, Noah Purcell, who's quite a brilliant lawyer, uh, that weekend. And we were talking, you know, we had a conversation we often have about potential cases. And I said, Noah, let's walk through the legal arguments. We did that. Uh, I said, you know, how strong you think those arguments are? He felt they were strong. And, uh, and it was obvious that there was tremendous harm to people in the state of Washington and around the country. And a lot of people say, well, Bob, was it a really hard decision to sue him, to sue the president at that time? And I'm always struck by that question, right? If you have strong legal arguments and someone or an entity is harming the people of your state, well, doesn't the question answer itself? I mean, really, doesn't it answer itself? It does. My only surprise was that everybody else wasn't suing him as well, honestly. But I had great confidence in our team and that we would prevail, and we have. And now state after state is joining, organization after organization is joining. And I, I think the reason why there's been so much attention is it's obviously the president's first real defeat, right? Uh, utter defeat, defeat after defeat. And that goes, it goes to the power of the law, right? The power of the law to stop unconstitutional actions, even when they're done by the President of the United States. And I tell my team all the time, the law is not some abstract notion. It's not. It's not. When I talk to law students, yes, when you're learning civil procedure, it may seem obscure, but when Noah is arguing for the Ninth Circuit, he's arguing in some respects about some civil procedure, right? That's part of the case. These things matter to people in deeply profound ways when it comes to that executive order. It also, actions by this administration impact the people of our country and the state in deeply personal ways when it comes to the environment. They do. What's going on, look, we're in polite com company. I cannot tell you what I really think about what I see coming from this administration when it comes to the environment. I mean, really, right? It does tick me off. The, what they are trying to do when it comes to the clean power plan, it's not right rolling it back. Salmon recovery efforts. Climate change deniers in the administration, right? We could be here all night. What I want you to know, what I want to leave you with, is that my team is dedicated to holding this administration accountable. When it comes to issues, when it comes to issues of immigration, civil rights, or in the environment. I've done lots of media interviews lately, and people always ask me, what issues are you focused on with this administration? I say those three every time, immigration, civil rights, the environment. And I view it as, as my responsibility, and my team knows I feel this strongly about it, to work on behalf of all of you and this environment that makes this state so great, right? It's why we're all here today. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate all the work that you do and that this organization does day in, day out, week in, week out, month after month, year after year, decade after freaking decade, right? You guys are doing it. So, so as someone who just turned 50 not too long ago, I can tell you life after 50 is great. I can't wait to work with you some more. Thanks so much for having me. Have a great night, everybody.